Hey, good morning again, FCF Church. Uh, hope you're tracking with us. We started yesterday looking at big events in Genesis. We're going to look at one in Exodus at the end. But today we come to the big event that we're all experiencing to this day. And typically it's called the fall. It's that place where humankind broke trust with their Creator. Now, just to give you a little background, if you read the chapter prior to this, it says that God used to come into the garden with Adam and Eve. You know, it seems like a daily thing. Evidently, He was teaching them progressively. He, you know, created Adam uh, from the, the dust on the ground, breathes into his nostrils, and then He puts Adam to sleep, brings Eve out from his rib. And it seems that life was wonderful. Everything around them was created just for them. They're given their mission with clarity, you know, be fruitful, be uh, multiply, fill the earth, all these kinds of things. And then you come to Genesis 3, and we have this entity that's a little mysterious. Uh, the Hebrew, Nakash, the shining one, the serpent, <coughs> comes into the garden. And this entity, whatever it is, is able to speak. And we know from the rest of the Bible that the entity is, in fact, uh, the being that was once called Lucifer, an angel, perhaps an archangel. And he's now called the devil and uh, Satan in various terms. So we're going to just read the discussion, how the first couple, the, the, they are you and I at our best. So we would have done the exact same thing, uh, how we fell from trusting in our Creator. So Genesis 3. And uh, I'll just pick right up in verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4, the serpent responds, <laughs> You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. First time this has ever happened. You know, they used it delighted when he came in. Verse 9, But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? Verse 10, He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid. This is the first experience of fear. I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and so I hid. And hence they got the name for that TV series, Naked and Afraid, from, from this, because the first couple were naked and afraid. All right, we see so many things happening here, but what uh, anybody that's familiar with my teaching has probably heard multiple times, I'll, I'll dare to say it again. We have this entity who had already rebelled against God. We don't know how many years before, could have been multiple millions, we just don't know, who had already himself desired to be like God, to be equal to God. We find that in Isaiah. And now he's baiting the first couple with the exact same temptation that stirred him. He was not content with the position that God had given him. So he slanders God. He says, God lied to you. You know, you, he told you you would die if you did a tree. You won't die if you did a tree. You'll, you'll become like God. You'll be equal with God. You won't be vulnerable. You won't be dependent anymore. You, you will be indestructible and on your own. You can make up your own will. You can be self-originating. You can be like God. You'll even know good and evil, and, and you'll, you'll like that. He hinted as much. And the amazing thing is that we don't know how much time Adam and Eve had had with God face to face, knowing that He had created the entire earth for them, filled it with beautiful things, and yet they break trust with God at the bait. We can be like God. They didn't like, evidently, feeling vulnerable and dependent upon God. We image-bearing beings, frankly, we have trouble with that. Satan had trouble with it before he was Satan, when he was Lucifer, and he knew that other image-bearing beings would likely take the same bait. So they break trust with God, but look at the fruit. Look at what happens right away. All of a sudden, fear. They hadn't ex experienced fear before. <clears throat> before fear came shame. They, they were naked, evidently, but they were unconcerned about it. Now, there could be a couple reasons. could be that they were enveloped in uh, an energy field, the Shekinah glory of God, and therefore they weren't aware of their nakedness. Or it could be 
that when they broke trust with God, something genetically really took off in their brain and a maturation cycle that was speeded up, not the way God wanted it. God was gently moving them along, teaching them gradually. But maybe they went from that stage, you know, we, we all know the stage where little children can run around naked, you know, I don't know when it stops, two, three years old, whatever, but they can run around naked and think nothing of it. But then they mature and they realize that's not appropriate. But something happened and they knew that they were naked, but it all started with their breaking trust with God. At that point, they were choosing to believe a created being, uh, his slander against the, what they knew to be the creator. So it, it was wrong on so many fronts. The result was they felt guilt, they felt shame, they felt fear, they felt insecurity, and the God that had created everything for them and who loved them, they now were afraid of. They didn't trust him. They were suspicious of him. That suspicion, that distrust has plagued the human race down to this day. It's the powerhouse, it's the dynamic source of all of our disobedience and disregard of God and our desire to distance ourselves from Him and have nothing to do with Him. And God has been progressively revealing Himself to prove His trustworthiness up until Christ. And in Christ, in Christ's crucifixion in particular, God has now proven His character completely trustworthy and now offers not just forgiveness, but eternal life and transformation to the original image, the image of God Himself that we were created to wear. So all this, all this starts in Genesis. Every time there's a crime committed, every time there's a war, every time a heart is broken, every time a tear is shed, it all started right there with broken trust in the Creator. The created being must live in a trust union with the Creator. It's the only way that life works. Thank you.